Uh, and also this will be the last recipe for the year and we are just a week before Christmas and I thought it has to be Christmassy, right? And um, also because we had the Christmas baking online course that went on, it went really good and uh, the students who joined have been doing really well. They've been practicing and stuff like that. So the rich fruit cake and, you know, most of the Christmas goodies were part of the course. So I was like, you know, had to... Uh, give that value to the people who had actually purchased the course. So I thought I will uh, make something Christmassy, uh, but then I couldn't do the fruit cake part of the bake along. So I thought I will have to make it a little more exciting. Um, so I have a lot of components today. We are going to make a Yule log um, to make it festive, but then I wanted to add flavors in the way that I thought I will like a chocolate Swiss roll. So we are going to have peanuts toasted and mix that with caramel sauce. We'll be making that in the live today. And then we're having milk chocolate mousse. And we'll be filling the roll with that. And the chocolate sponge, obviously, it is having the eggs. So, you know, for people who are doing eggless, you have to excuse me this time. And uh, there is almond meal in the sponge so it is a very um, lighter sponge but with a rich almond flavor coming out of it and uh, imagine the taste of um, dark chocolate from the cocoa powders taste in the sponge topped with caramelized toasted peanuts and again topped with the milk chocolate and to be rolled into a um, swiss roll and we are going to make it like a yule log and then imagine cutting one slice and then eating it is like going to be a divine bite. Like I told in the post, it is a two-way ticket to heaven and then back. Okay, so you guys have to try this out. Um, so uh, I'm going to make everything in the life. Like even the sponge is going to be made here. Yeah, I'm going to use the same sponge because it has to come out of the oven and then we have a process that we need to do. So I thought I will have to show that live instead of keeping it baked ahead of time. So with all the components, I think it is best to start with the recipe. So I have the ingredients measured and kept for the um, chocolate sponge. Um, to start with chocolate sponge, you have to preheat the oven to 200 degree centigrade and have a 13 inch by a nine inch baking tray. Um, butter the tray and add the parchment paper on top. Can I have the tray? Uh, and also butter on top of that um, tray as well. So the tray is buttered first and then you have the parchment paper on top. And on top of the parchment paper, again, it's buttered and then again, it is floored on top. Like add flour and then just get the flour all around and then tap down the excess flour and then you have the pan prepared. So getting the pan prepared and then preheating the oven should be the first step. And uh, I'm gonna use one bowl for the yolk and the whites um, so I cannot do the yolks first because you need a clean bowl with a, a clean and a dry bowl in fact and then a clean and a dry um, blade beater blade as well for the whites yolks is fine so I will be using the same bowl um, for beating the yolks okay but then so I'm going to start with whites obviously we are going to beat the whites and make the meringue and then leave it out for too long then you'll have a dry sponge so you have to be quicker now if you if you think you cannot do the steps quickly you can beat the yolk with a different beater in a different bowl and then use a different beater and a different bowl for the white and have the both separately in that case you could do the whites at the end but i'm going to do things quickly then for if you have to use just one bowl then you will follow the method that i am doing now okay so whites go into the bowl you want to get the kitchen aid in the middle using the balloon whisk okay i'm going to start to beat and then once it becomes frothy I'm going to add um, the sugar measured, like uh, the, 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 that sugar that's been halved, one part will be for the white and then the other part will be for the uh, yolk. So I'm going to add the sugar and then also cream of tartar, 
will go into the whites. So I'm just going to add the cream of tartar. So you can see it is starting to form up, right? And when it is starting to form up at this stage, you have to start adding the sugar in a slow and steady stream a little at a time. You can't be adding the um, sugar all together or your meringue will not form properly. Okay, so don't add the sugar all at a time. So you will just follow like how I did. You will be adding it in a slow stream. If you are using a hand beater at this stage, what you could do, use another hand, like maybe keep a towel or something on your table and keep the bowl and use your hand beater and then keep bristling or use a teaspoon a little at a time and then keep adding the sugar while your other hand keeps uh, whisking to make the meringue. Do not add everything at one go so you just need the whites to become stiffer now just open to check how it is okay so you can see the peaks are falling uh, down right you can see it is just a little wobbly there, which means it needs to get beaten up some more time on medium high. So I'm just going to put down and then increase the speed and then beat. Now check the consistency if the peaks are just going to stay. Um, you can see here the soft peak there, right? It is just holding the shape, okay? You could stop here, but I'm just going to run it for one more minute to make it even more stiffer. But then over beating will just lose the glossiness of the meringue. We just have to be careful whether you're just going to overbeat or just stop when it is stiff peaks yet glossy. Okay, so now I'm just going to remove the beater off and then empty the, you know, clean up the beater. Now I said I'm going to use the same bowl, right? Now uh, I'm going to transfer this meringue. You can see it is glossy, stiff. And most importantly, it is not dry.
this I'll use it to fold with the dry ingredients after I'm done with the um, yolk and the second portion of the sugar. So the sugar is measured and uh, given as two separate uh, ingredients in the list. So one will go with the white and the other will go with uh, Okay, so I'm just going to put this back where I'm going to add the yolk. But uh, just before that, I should have done this stuff before, which is keeping the uh, dry ingredients ready, which is the flour. I'm going to sift and keep it ready. The salt. Almond meal. And the cocoa powder. You just want to have a, a bigger holes in the sieve so you can just. Uh, have the almond meal passing through that sieve. So it's a metal sieve and the holes are quite bigger. Also, I'm just getting rid of the, the cocoa powder chunks. It's okay to have the bigger, um, you know, the, the, the parts of the almond meal which is fine but then you just need to have the flour no lump cocoa powder and the almond meal everything sifted and then mixed together okay so this you could do it before so this will avoid the whites getting dried out at this time so just having the kitchen aid again in the middle i'm adding the yolk four and to this I will add the paddle and again there is sugar measured and there is a vanilla that will also go into this we have to wait for the ribbon consistency which you'll just know begin to be on medium high speed first So just need to beat until the yolks are broken okay so at that stage you just don't want the yolks to um, drip from the paddle so you can see it is just broken and at that stage you will start adding the sugar at a slow stream when it the beta blade is still going on
you want to keep beating to see the yolk and the sugar starts to thicken up and i'm adding that little vanilla I just want to show the consistency at uh, this stage. I will be continuing to beat this for a while. For now, you can see the yellow is turned um, paler now and the sugar is getting incorporated and you can see it is thickening up now. I will continue to beat this on high speed until I'll have an even thicker consistency. you can see the yolks have just become so much uh, paler and the consistency for the ribbon texture is you lift the yolk and the sugar with a spatula and then drop it back and you will be having the ribbon consistency folding it back and forth okay so that is the stage you know the yolks are done and I'm just going to have the beta blade also removed. I'm just going to get the kitchen aid away. And now the next most important step is folding the flour with the meringue, yolk, meringue, and the flour. There are three components that we have together, and they have to be incorporated very carefully. Okay, so now we are just going to cut and fold. Now I need the sieve. Okay, so I'm just going to add one half of this uh, flour mixture into the yolk and then one half of the um, Meringue, the egg whites into the yolk and then cut and fold. Okay, so I want to sieve the dry, the flour mixture. You don't want to add it like dropping the entire weight on the yolk. And half of the meringue. And now you just need to cut and fold briefly. That's what I've written. So you're not supposed to overfold or try and incorporate everything together like so much until it blends without the traces of the whites, yolk or the flour. You just want to gently mix where you do not have the flour like it's in whole part that's not mixed. 
but you can just have traces of the flour white and the yolk okay at this stage i go back so you follow this then you can be sure that you will not overfold if you overfold then the whole thing will just deflate and you will not have a proper texture to the sponge okay so now for the second portion you could also do it in three parts if you think this will risk um, and make you overfold because you just may be starting out and then you're not sure about the cut and fold technique you could also do it in three parts so i'm emptying all the whites here so when you you will know when you overfold it if the batter is not thick anymore and then it starts becoming runny the way in which you fold at the end what you need to have is a thick batter so go to the bottom and then turn over and then press it that will be the cut and fold you are folding and then you are cutting so you should not have the blobs of the white without getting itself mixed and then the flour sitting separately like a whole bunch of flour just can't be separate without getting mixed but you don't try to mix everything thoroughly okay so this is the consistency we are looking at okay you can see it is a quite thicker batter okay so what you're having here is a batter like this okay i'm just showing the consistency right now this will go into the prepared tray So you can just cross check your consistency at this stage if it turns out to be quite runny then you may not have the right texture of the sponge because this is like a, a fatless sponge where the leavening agent is the egg white only you don't have baking powder but then if you overfold you will deflate the volume that was created by the meringue the egg white and so you will not have the sponge rising at all okay so now i'm just going to use an offset spatula and just level the sponge spread it around evenly Okay, now I'll just do a brief tapping. To so just release bigger air pockets and then after the stage, this will go into the oven to get baked at 200 degrees centigrade for about 8 to 10 minutes. And then I'll check if it is springing uh, back to the touch and then a toothpick inserted will come out clean. So I'm just going to put this into the oven while we just get the table ready for the peanut caramel topping okay so you can just have the induction stove okay 
okay and then the rest of the ingredients for the caramel peanut topping so first we are going to make the caramel sauce okay so i have everything ready here toasted peanuts they just look yummy but this is like an inspiration from the snickers okay so i really love um, chocolate with caramel and peanut uh, because snickers is my favorite candy so at the end this is going to be a, a snicker kind of a flavor of a swiss roll so let's begin with uh, the caramel sauce um, i'm just going to have the sugar water honey in place of honey you could use liquid glucose or light corn syrup okay and i'm adding the salt also here and then i'm going to switch on the stove You still need to add butter, cream, and then the toasted peanuts. So this is this will be the first layer of filling. Now the um, sponge is gone for baking. Okay, so it is in the So I'm going to wait. So if, if this is going to take maybe uh, an extra um, time, at the moment the sponge comes out of the oven, I'm going to show you how it looks. And uh, I'm going to allow the sponge to cool down, say maybe for five minutes. And then once it is in the temperature that I could handle, I'm going to roll it down with butter paper. So making the Swiss roll, and with the filling, when you're going to roll, uh, we just have the fear that it could crack on the outside as we roll a sponge. So um, the technique that uh, will just help you roll the Swiss roll without having the cracks on the outside is to roll it before adding the filling. So I'm going to show you how and uh, how you just unroll it without it sticking back so all that we'll just check before for which maybe I could just um, maybe wait for this to finish and then we'll just check if the sponge has come out after cooking. I'm going to show you those steps. Okay. Mm, now, let me just wait for the sugar to melt. That's the first step. Every time you're just working with sugar syrup and then uh, wait for it to go on to the next stage or whatever temperature or caramel or anything. You need to wait for the sugar to melt completely and then allow it to go on to the next stage. Now, what you can see um, is sugar melting. Now, I'm going to wait for the right caramel color, burnt amber. So, you can't have it like really very light color. Otherwise, the caramel flavor will not be there. So... And if it just goes beyond a certain point, then you could have the bitter flavor. Into this, I haven't added the salt, uh, but you could add, uh, no, I have added the quarter teaspoon of salt goes in. But if you want it a little more salty, then uh, you could add another quarter teaspoon. There is a little salt added in the sponge as well. I'm just... Uh, checking the color starting to change okay the moment i see it starting to change i will lift the pan off the flame to have control over what color of the caramel how much caramelization i can allow okay so now this is very very light so after swirling down so what i'm doing by swirling it is distributing the caramelization throughout the entire sugar syrup 
Because you don't want that one part of the bottom of the saucepan to just catch up extra caramelization and then that little burnt flavor will be there throughout. So I'm just controlling the heat, waiting for the color to change a bit. And once I see it just goes from this shade to the next darker amber. I will again lift it and then try to distribute the caramel throughout the sugar syrup. But don't be scared, but if you're making for the first time, obviously there will be anxiety. But then you can just wait. And if you do not take it to the right color, then it is just nothing but a thickened sugar syrup and not caramel. So. Just try to control the flame. I see it is taking a little more time, right? So to speed up, I am increasing the heat, the temperature, and then waiting for it to move on to the next stage. So I'm just lifting it off the heat. And now I know it is just moved on to the next shade. I need it a little more darker. So swirling and then putting it back. Just carefully looking at the color change. Now it's totally. I can just um, smell the caramel's flavor. It's quite good. Well, let me just distribute it and then check the color that I have. And then I will decide if I have to put it back again. Obviously, it is very, very light amber, right? So, we just put it back. So you need to allow it to cook and not keep swirling it frequently and only then it is going to move on from the first level of caramel stage to the next. You can see now the color is changing. I'm going to swirl it, check if this is fine for me. And yeah, obviously this is like really, really hot sticky sugar. So just be careful while handling it and don't do this with kids around. So okay, this is the color. I am just going to go on to the next shade of caramel. Okay. This will be very, very light. This will not have a deeper caramel flavor. So I'm just going to allow and move on to the next stage. Okay, so now this is a good color. So I want to stop it here. Okay, now let me check.
Okay, so on top of this, I'm just going to add butter. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the stove. Into this, I'm going to add butter. Obviously, it's going to sizzle up. And the cream. You can see the beautiful color. This is the caramel sauce. Now you want to allow the butter to melt. Okay, and put this back on heat. On medium flame okay and then drop in all the peanuts measured peanuts here and then coat the peanuts it will uh, thicken up once it's cooled down Okay, so this will thicken up in case while spreading if it is quite thick, then we would microwave it a bit. So I'm going to switch it off show on the side cam, the consistency. Okay. So that's what it looks like. I can just smell beautiful roasted peanuts and the caramel. This is the perfect color of the caramel and you can see all the peanuts are just coated with the caramel okay so now i just need to allow this to cool down i'm going to transfer this into another bowl peanuts i toasted on the stove top and remove the skin and prepared so i thought that's a simpler step so i don't have to show it here okay so i'm just going to allow this caramel to cool down the sponge is still there okay okay so it is going to be a little runny at the stage but it will thicken up okay and uh, we'll keep this uh, ganache ready Okay, so we'll uh, do the ganache the double boil method. Let me have the, so we're moving on to the milk ganache. I want to have the water to boil and then I'm just going to have the milk chocolate. You could use dark, I thought I'll do milk because I like the flavor. Um, and I'm going to keep this bowl of chocolate on top and add the cream and then melt both the chocolate and the cream together. So I'm waiting for the water to heat up. So once the wa water begins to boil, I'm going to put the bowl uh, of the chocolate. So I have a question. Uh, can this caramel be used for butterscotch cake layering? Yes, you can use this caramel for the butterscotch cake layering. 
um, without adding the peanuts, that is the caramel sauce itself. And then if you are thinking about any uh, crunchy uh, nuts, then you could add uh, chopped uh, walnuts, almonds, and obviously peanuts to give the Snickers flavor. Okay, so um, the sponge is out of the oven. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it here, wait for it to cool down. Okay, it is quite hot. So the water also started to boil. I'm just going to touch and see. And uh, I should be able to uh, bear that heat. So the water started to boil, but I'm just going to keep the chocolate and the cream a bit away because this you need to turn and then roll while it is quite warm. So like I could touch and it is warm, but I can bear that heat. That is the stage. Now I need the sieve, the icing sugar, and a sheet of butter paper. Okay, so now I think this icing sugar is not mentioned in the recipe, but this is one important step. Now on top of this, I'm just going to add icing sugar on a metal sieve and then dust icing sugar now if you don't like the white uh, shade as you're rolling the the swiss roll or your yule log you could mix up um, cocoa powder with uh, icing sugar or you could use cocoa powder i felt the cocoa powder will be like too strong um, a flavor on the cake so i am okay with having the white um, color from the icing sugar now on top of this, I'm going to add the parchment paper. So this step is necessary if you want to have the um, Swiss roll. Come roll, roll back after your filling without any um, cracks. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this over now. And remove the pan and release this parchment paper. So this will be removed and taken out. You don't need this for now. Again, on this layer, you need to dust icing sugar. So you do this while the sponge, the roll, the sheet cake is still warm. And I'm going to roll it on the long side because I'm going to cut it back. And that is when you will have more number of slices as you cut as well. Now keep the um, parchment paper within and roll keeping the Parchment paper also will go within the roll. We are not filling now, right? But we are just molding it and trying to make it retain the shape while it is still warm. Okay. Now this I'm just going to place it on the baking tray. And now this can just rest for some time. Maybe half an hour to about one hour until completely cool down. Okay, so now this step is important. So I had to stop making the ganache and show this process because this cannot wait. Now this will go to rest. And let's get back to making the ganache.
Now the water was hot, right? So let me wait until it starts to bubble up again. Once I see the water is boiling, let me just bring it to low flame and then add the cream. Just going to gently hold the saucepan and the glass bowl together and then keep mixing allowing the chocolate to melt The chocolate melt completely and blend with the cream. You don't want the water to boil and bubble up through the sides of the bowl. So you can see the chocolate and the cream is completely blended and melted together. Just take this bowl and then keep it on oh, a towel so you don't have the water dripping from the bottom of this glass bowl. Okay, so now this needs to cool down. So the next steps that we still have is to open up the Swiss roll, add the peanut caramel layer and then make the milk chocolate mousse for which this needs to cool down. So I'm just going to send this to be kept in the freezer because now it is quite hot. We've just made it right. So I'm going to send this to the freezer and in the meantime, I'm going to start um, beating the whipped cream. I'm just going to get another glass bowl. So it's like a quick fix. The milk chocolate ganache should have been already made if you are doing at home um, make the ganache ahead of time here i just wanted to keep all the crusts together in the life so 
in in freezer i mean if suppose maybe you're not sure of how cold it should be before you move on to the next stage then maybe you may not have the right consistency of the mousse okay so um, do we have any um, comments to see no not much because i just want to give some time for that um, ganache to don't freeze anjali has asked don't freeze like you just wanted to set i am sending it out to freezer because i just don't want to delay the process okay and uh, i have to start beating this cream and then i have to have the milk chocolate ganache cooled to the room temperature at least okay mm. so until the milk chocolate ganache just cools down in the room temperature a bit we just check for any comments i think that one i had already answered we can use that as a caramel sauce here on the instagram do we have in comments are not there right okay so what i'll do i'll just begin to um, beat the whipping cream and then by the time we just need to take out and then keep whisking in the freezer just use uh, like every minute or so just take it out even 15 seconds once if we just take out from the freezer and uh, mix it up so we can just distribute the um, the cold the chillness from the freezer properly throughout so that's a non dairy whipping cream if you're using dairy whipping cream for making the mousse the fat content should be 55% more so i'm going to slowly start beating this so what i'm making now is milk chocolate mousse the milk ganache is already made and we've gone to the freezer to get back to room temperature or a little cold so it doesn't um, make the um, filling very soft
so the well then ash is here it's in the room temperature now it's not hot anymore okay but then you can see it is still flowy now what i'm going to do um begin to whip the whipping cream and make it a stiff peaks and then have that folded in the ganache i'm not going to add this ganache into the beater and then beat so let's take the whipping cream to stiff peaks now Okay, so the whipped cream is just beaten, almost like over whipped, because we are just going to remove the air from it while folding. Now you can check the consistency is like over whipped, very very stiff. Now if you are using a um, cold milk chocolate ganache, you don't have to over whip. But then if you're doing everything together. Even if you over whip, you can just soften it using your spatula and get it to the right consistency. Okay. Now I'm just going to take the bowl. Okay, so I'm just going to show how it is on the inside of the bowl. Okay, so it's quite stiff, right? Now, I'm just going to start adding the ganache. And then fold this. And incorporate the ganache into the whipped cream. Adding the remaining ganache. Again, I'm just going to fold the ganache with the whipped cream. And now, by doing that, uh, the over whipped cream will just soften up and then get to a stiffer consistency, combining with the milk ganache.
So you can see the drier air bubble stage is not there with the whipped cream that it was when I had over whipped. What you can see here is a quite smooth and stiff whipped cream and ganache together. Like the actual mousse will obviously have the yolk prepared, like at least the pastry cream. But here I'm just not adding it. We just want to <laughs> also put things together quickly and most of it is going to be in life, right? So let me clear up a bit and I'm just going to get the sponge. and a peanut filling as well. So now we have made all that we need to set our sous roll. Okay. So it's cooled down. So I'm just going to gently open up. Okay, and not fully. Okay, so allow it. And open up right now and we just need the peanut filling peanut caramel filling to go on top and then I'm just going to top it with a milk chocolate mousse and then roll it back again with the filling and this time I'll just leave out the parchment paper as I roll the sponge Okay, so the um, peanut filling is cooled down. It was in the freezer from the time I made. And now you can just check the consistency. I just want to scoop down so you could just see. Okay, so it is quite thick. So spreading will be difficult. Okay, so what you can see here is a uh, quite thick paste that that will be the right one uh, to go on the roll because we're just going to add mousse and then roll the sponge right so i'm just going to chop the tip of the piping bag make it quite big and then begin to So if you find it difficult to spread it, you could microwave it a bit, like say maybe for 10 seconds until the caramel melts a bit. So spreading is easy. I'm just going to fill in the gaps. I'm just going to gently see if I can spread it out. Okay, so the remaining places I'm just going to fill it with a mousse. It is quite thick. Now you want a flowy um, peanut topping here. You could just microwave it a bit. You could do that by keeping it in the piping bag itself. 
okay so on top of this i'm just going to use the um, nose again here it's an overweight cream right we just want to make it lighter so you just need to use your spatula and mix it properly so it will be stiff but you don't want air bubbles you don't want to make it runny as well so what i am looking at is a cream that is not having air bubbles i am just going to leave out a little bit for the outer layer so this will go and it will fill up in between the gaps of the peanut caramel okay so press it well so it goes in the gaps so each of your slices will be filled with the caramel peanut and the mousse so put some pressure Just going to level it. Just going to remove a little bit from this place so I can just start rolling comfortably. I just need that. I'm going to add it on the top. I'm just going to roll with the help of the parchment paper. But as I'm going to roll, I will use the parchment paper. But then I will leave out the parchment paper. And then have it rolled. So now the parchment paper is outside. It's not gone inside. At this stage, we will put it back in the freezer before we are cutting. So, it is all close together. So, this is what you have. Okay, There is cracks, but then we will be covering that with a cream on the top. right? So, I am just going to put this. It is quite heavy and everything is firm. But to be safe, before cutting, we just want to put it in the freezer. And then let me check for queries in the meantime so let's take about 5 uh, to 10 minutes until it comes out until then I'm just going to yeah queries that we have and then if I have something to talk to you Okay, so so this part, the roll is kept in the um, freezer. Until then, I thought, let me just look for comments. Okay, so what brand or cream did I use? I think Vivo non-diary whipping cream. Meringue to be perfect. Hey, Melita. I think uh, when I made the meringue, I was telling and I was making. Um, so you just need to follow the exact same steps. Wait until the egg whites um, become frothy and then add the cream of tartar. The purpose of adding cream of tartar is to give stability to the whites. You don't want the whites to deflate and that is very important. 
and adding the sugar a little at a time in a slow stream while the beta is running. These are the key important steps to have the meringue stable. Mm. Meringue, that, that one is done. Yeah, you can make the ganache. Anjali, I think you've been asking about the milk chocolate ganache, right? You can make the previous day. Don't need to freeze. You can just leave it in the room temperature. I can just keep it in the fridge like maybe say half an hour. And once it is stiff and uh, cold, then it is good. But we all can also can bring it to the room temperature in that flowy consistency that I had today. And then half the whipped cream, just quite um, over whipped. And then get the ganache poured into that over whipped cream and then fold it together. Then you have a stiff uh, whipped cream mixed with ganache. Okay. And... Yeah. Yeah. Let's just look for the next question. Like the cream of tartar, it adds stability to the whites. Now, if the cream of tartar is not there, and then you are beating the whites, and then you have the frothy, um, uh, you know, meringue, and when you are going to leave it out for a longer period of time, then you will have the water forming at the bottom of the bowl, and then um, it, it deflates. It just breaks down. The meringue breaks down. Cream of tartar will just help the meringue stay there and make it stable. If you do not have cream of tartar, then you cannot substitute with anything. Um, you have to be just a little more careful about making the meringue and. Uh, there are chances that it could break down. Say maybe there is water form at the bottom of the meringue in the bowl. And uh, if that is the case, then you might have to trash that and then redo the meringue and then use the recipe. Okay. Yeah, the recipe is posted in the page, both Facebook and the Instagram. It is in the carousel. So look for the Yule Lock picture and then swipe right on Instagram. And then in the Facebook, they are just a group of pictures posted together and then the recipe is there. Um, eggless replacement, um, because in this particular recipe, we have the whites and the yolks. At least for whites, I can say aquafaba will work. Um, but for the yolks here, in this particular recipe, yes, because I haven't tried, maybe I should just get back and then try maybe an eggless chocolate uh, you log or a Swiss roll. But as I haven't tried, I'm not able to give you a substitute or even another recipe um, to try this out. Okay. So until maybe five more minutes, it will take for the Swiss roll to come out. And then I'm just going to cut at an angle. That's a very important step if you're going to make it like a Yule log. So you might have to wait for five more minutes. Until then, I thought I will talk to you about the upcoming course, the Fonbeid's Online Cake Decorating Masterclass. I've been talking about that course in quite a few of my previous lives, only because I just wanted to create the awareness. If, if in case you guys, um, you know, uh, I, I am new to you, uh, because you've been just starting to see me live or, you know, face to face like this, like in the past two or three months only. But then there have been people who I have worked with over the last 10 years and I've been training people for the last nine years in the cake field. And then there have been a lot of beginners who I have groomed into like really bigger cake artists who are there in the industry today. Um, so this bigger course that I have, that is the soul and the core heart of the Fun Bites Online School. And uh, for the way how the Fun Bites Online Cake Decorating Masterclass works, Fun Bites has been awarded the Best Online Education Award in the year 2019 by Indian Cake Awards. And so that fame is there for that particular course. Why? Because we are going to have students and then I'm going to check each and every lesson and each and every step, step by step, stage by stage guidance will be there. And then it is an eight month long course where I have just framed the course's curriculum in such a way that we have everything covered in that particular course. And it is going to be a hands on, which means you will be doing it from the comfort of your home. And I will be watching you do with the stage by stage pictures that you will be sending it out to me. And I will be verifying it. And even if you're working mom, you have kids and, you know, but with all the other commitments still, there have been students in the past who have successfully done the course. Uh, even working moms are also be, have been doing really, really well in the past. So because these are queries that I keep getting from, you know, the inquiries that I'm having right now, like I'm working and I have only the time in the night to do my, uh, you know, cakes and is that a fine and all that. You obviously you will be working their pre-recorded lessons. They are not live and we'll have weekly lessons. Um, you know, scheduled and released to you every Friday and you will have a week's time. You could watch the video anytime convenient to you. And 
you will be doing the lessons also anytime convenient to you and we will be having a um, team of mentors who will help you support when you are going to work on your cake so there are there are like a lot of things packed together in the FODMC, which I cannot be putting it together like in a five minute break like this ever. But then I could just come up to talk about it a little more. So we just have the word spread of what is so special about FODMC, why it grooms a lot of budding bakers into like you know renowned cake artists from there once they finish the course they are just able to cook up a lot of beautiful cakes because they have been trained in whipped cream the ganache the buttercream and then we have the portrait painting the palette knife the pointillism the buttercream flowers buttercream wedding cake and then we have the fondant the figurines the sugar flowers wafer paper flowers and then we have the fondant wedding cake like the the, the list is like endless and then we have this entire package packed together in eight months but then after three or four months, once the course is just in the heat of the, you know, the time, like half of the course, I allow the students to go explore a lot of new techniques and I allow them to pick up any technique they want to learn. And depending on the strength of each student, I allow them to execute what technique they choose into the cake and they finish the lessons accordingly. We also have assessments and then you have taken the entire course, you know that you will be groomed by the most sought after tried and tested method which is there in the industry for the last seven years the, the, the course is there and then the batches have been going on and nine batches have successfully completed and the tenth one is about to start on the 5th of january and the registrations are going on so you could reach out to me if you need to know more details the website has the enrollment option there you could just go add to cart and then be a part of this course so I'm looking forward to having you guys if you guys are watching and if you've already been part of FODMC then maybe you could just take this opportunity and then spread the word and let people know your friends know what changes it had made to you being part of Fun Bites decorating master class and if you are new and if this has impressed you in any way then you could just help to spread the word so we have the registrations ongoing and we will not be having the in-between registrations the other next batch will start only in august to september so i do not take registrations in between okay um okay so bhavna says it she never felt like it is an online course so bhavna is part of the ongoing batch and i know uh, she's been doing extremely well exceptionally well again um, so you could reach out to Bhavna just in case if you would want to know a little more details about the course or how she felt and what is the experience in the course and how she just transformed from making a simple uh, whipped cream ruffle cake to about making a bust cake and she is yet to finish a journey. She has a little more to complete and I'm so looking forward to seeing Bhavna finish the course with flying colors and what she's going to do after the end of the course then they just have the stars to reach and fly high okay so enough with fodmc i was looking forward to you guys to go explore at least know even if you're not going to be part of the course explore and know what fodmc is and what we will be doing in eight months long how students are benefiting from this course and something that i've been doing years together and then it is still the sort after course for people to transform themselves from bakers to cake artists okay so let's have the sponge we still have comments okay so let me check the mousse again. I think we just add a little uh, brown color into this to make it a little dark brown gel color. I just add brown gel because I'm just going to have the outer color to be. So this is quite firm now. I'm just going to set this up in a board. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this at an angle, okay, not straight, cut this at an angle. So that angle, I'm just going to place it um, on the side here, okay. So maybe on the top here like this at an angle okay so 
and I'm just going to place this on the board. Both of them are just going to move. So what I will do, have a, just a bit for the roll to stick. Let me take the bigger one and then place it on the board. And then I'm taking this one I'm just going to place this one here we should do it on this side that looks good this one right Okay, now I'm going to cover the top for which you could use ganache, but then Before covering, I'm just going to use the sugar syrup. We could do the sugar syrup before the peanut topping as well. And even if you've done at that stage, here again from the other side, you could just go on and brush it with sugar syrup. So do it once uh, before the peanut topping and do it again here as well. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, brown gel color. into the mousse and then mix this to get a darker shade of brown. Okay. So I'm just going to Use the spatula. In the meanwhile, let me just use the fork. Now gently need to spread without losing the shape. There is a bit of the marble. Go on and then spread it out completely. Cover the um, sponge from all sides
checking all around so the goal is to cover up the entire sponge So I've covered up completely. And now I'm just going to use the fork. So just create the wooden So once you're just happy with the texture and then finally to get it to the festive mode we just need to add one small thing the glazed cherries so obviously i didn't have the real cherries so i've just made a few fondant um, cherries which i'm just going to place it on top I'm just going to wipe off the sugar syrup. Wiping the excess sugar syrup to just have a cleaner look. You could place the cherries and wipe them as well, but just make sure the sides are quite clean. Okay, now. These are fondant. So they are just made like small berries, right? And some leaves as well. So we're just completing the U log, the peanut caramel. 
chocolate you log there is like a lot of components here in this i thought the end of the year should be like quite packed with information for you so we could just end this year you know with a, with a something that's made with a lot of components so you have a lot more things to learn and so i could meet you in the next year with the bake along with another exciting series of recipes okay so obviously here before we are ending we just need to cut the first layer we just need a plate you could just keep this after cleaning up knife a better knife this is okay I'm just going to cut this end. So once you cut, you will start having a cleaner look. We just cut this one also, push this back a bit. You could just freeze it a bit so it just uh, firms up. Now we have everything baked and we never had a lot of time to allow it to take the shape. We just put it back. I'm just removing this and then we could just wipe off. Okay, so we have the peanut caramel filled with milk chocolate mousse and we have also covered the same milk chocolate mousse on the outside of the log as well. So what you will have is a very uh, smooth roll as you cut okay you can see the caramel oozing out of the log and with the topped cherries we could drizzle some icing sugar on top to add more snowy effect okay. we just need to wipe off a little bit okay so we have quite come to end of a very long bake along session i think this is the longest in case because we did have quite a few components and I'm glad we did everything on live so you could just be sure of how everything went together the only thing maybe you could do a little differently than what I did was to use a sugar syrup on the sheet and then go on with a peanut topping and then again on the top as well you will have to Okay, so we have the completed June log. And um, yeah, so um, hopefully you liked it. And uh, then we've come to the end of uh, this year's 2021. Uh, and we have nine recipes made in the bake along. We have been noting down on the eight um Eight, eight, the ones who have completed all the eight bake-alongs together and you are all the consistent bakers. We have the list and then we are going to send out the consistent baker badges this year. So that will be a Santa's gift. So I'll be the Santa and sending out the gift for whoever have been consistently baking with me. And so this is the ninth one continue to do and then we will have more number of people doing a lot of uh, recipes together with me and then you will be getting bigger gifts like the Santa will be giving you um, more gifts to you okay so um, wishing you all a merry 
uh, Christmas and a very, very happy new year. Happy 2022. And in the week along, I'm going to meet you next year in 2022, January. I'll announce the date soon. Okay, so we'll be doing two recipes in a month from 2022. Okay, so see you all then. Keep doing, keep baking and keep sharing if you're doing something with the recipes that I shared with you. Okay, until then, signing out, meeting you next year, 2022.